going to Boston for a few days to visit my cousins and they do not keep kosher. So I'm bringing some food with me and I'll show you that. Obviously they live in Boston. There's like an observant community in Boston and they have taken me to one of the kosher restaurants before. So I'll get food there. One of my friends from school lives in Boston. So I'm gonna hang out with her and either eat at her house or we'll go out to eat. So it's not like I'm going to like a kosher food desert, but whatever. I want to bring food with me because I don't like being hungry. So I'm gonna show you what I bought. I got this sweet potato roll with, um, I don't know where it is. It's like a tiny, cute little bottle of sweet sauce. So that's like snack tonight in the car. Potatoes, roasted potatoes. I don't know, they're good. They're good cold. Everything I bought, I wanted to make sure that I would like it cold. Bananas, obviously I can buy bananas there. This is like for the car ride and whatever. Just bananas are good and silly. Pringles for the car ride. These crackers, just for snack. Again, I like totally could get these there. I just like wanted snacks for the car and like I didn't want to have to go to the grocery store even though I am driving. Last time I went to visit them a few years ago, I didn't drive and I like felt bad. I like asked them to like go to a store. Um, But this time my sister and I are driving so I can just like go to a store and buy whatever I want. Pretzel chicken, it's good cold. It's kind of like schnitzel, but like pretzels. I don't know, it's like some Jewish thing. Schnitzel wrap, this is like good to like for the run. Fruity quinoa salad, it's a good snack and quinoa filling. Nishna salad, this is just like salad base. I can put the pretzel chicken in it um, or just eat it as is, but it's like good to have salad. Pasta, again, good cold. It's part of, cause inflationphobia is real and there are a bunch of kosher ice cream stores near them. And then this grilled salmon lunch thing. It's like pretty big, so I'll probably eat it in like two goings, but again, I wanted healthy. So I got this. Hello. Hi. We're going on a road trip. We're going to Boston. And we realized this is our first road trip, just the two of us. Like we've been to and from Boston a million times together, like with our parents. All the sun's in your face, Nicole. So good. Um, this is the first time it's just us, and I'm very tired. But it goes without letting me nap. You've already been trying to nap for an hour. I know, and I haven't been successful. I'm really? so tired. What do you want to say? We're still about two and a half hours to go. I'm hungry. My butt hurts. <laughs> From what? Bursitis. What is that? It's what I have in my hips. Oh, that's what you go to PT for? Yeah. Fun. In this video, I want to obviously show you my trip, but I also want to talk about what it is like keeping kosher around people who don't keep kosher and also people that don't really know that much about kashrut. Because my mom and my sister have learned a lot over the last few years since I started keeping kosher, but my cousins really don't know that much. So we were able to go to a store and I showed them how many products had a kosher symbol on it and I convinced them to, for some things, get the kosher option. That way I can also eat it. For basically every meal, we ate at home so my cousins had their food and I had my food that I brought it is weird eating at the same table as kosher not kosher food but it is what it is there was one time though that when we were in Cape Cod we went out for dinner and I just didn't eat anything I just sat there and whatever it kind of sucks sometimes but Really, I was just enjoying everyone's company, so it was not a big deal. So there is a kosher ice cream place near my cousin that we went to, so that was really fun to all be able to get food together. We also made mojitos, which was really easy to make, and we could find everything kosher, and that was a really fun way to go enjoy a drink together. Nicole just made us mojitos, so mine and Hannah's are the same, except yeah. mine has um, raspberry, like, coolie, but hers just has trigger. Okay, okay. like... That is strong. I told you. It's like, it just mainly tastes like seltzer. Yeah, put a little another raspberry scoop in here. <laughs> I told you. Or it tastes like more mint. <laughs> the last morning of the trip, we went out to a bakery for breakfast and the bakery was not kosher, but all the syrups for the coffee were kosher. So I got a lavender vanilla latte. I didn't like it, but it was really cool that I could try something new. I'm sitting here editing this video and I realized that I talked about the logistics of how and what I ate on this trip and how I prepared for it. But I didn't really talk about like the personal or emotional side of it, if that makes sense. Um, listen, keeping kosher is not always glamorous. You know, when I'm home and I currently live in a Jewish area, it's so easy that literally right down the street, there are 10 kosher restaurants. And at school, I don't know if it's, it's kind of just been my norm that I basically make all my own food, but I do have the kosher dining option and other things. and. 
whatever. I really haven't traveled that, that much um, where I haven't had kosher food accessible, but it is really different traveling with people who do keep kosher versus don't keep kosher. So I can tag the video, but when I was in seminary, I went to Europe for about two weeks with two of my friends and they also kept kosher. So we were in the same boat together. So I never felt like an inconvenience trying to find kosher food because all three of us keep strictly kosher and we all want to find kosher food. So when we were choosing where to go in Europe, we chose places that had easily accessible kosher food. So that way we could just go out to eat or go to the deli, get a sandwich and be out for the day and have that be that. But it's very different when you are the only person that keeps kosher because you do feel awkward and you do feel weird. And my family is so supportive and then, and they're so nice. And my cousin asked me, oh, can you eat this? Can you eat this? Can you eat this? And gave me plastic paper goods and, and all those things. Um, it's not always fun and it really can be a nuisance and an inconvenience sometimes. And it sucks. But at the end of the day, I'm doing this for Hashem, for God. And I'm doing this for my connection with Hashem. So ultimately... I keep that in mind. It's not always super inspiring, super motivating. You know, not everything about being religious is incredible or you feel super spiritual. And an example that um, one of the Rebbitsons at my school gives is when you're in an airport and there's like literally like nothing kosher to eat or nothing actually substantial, you know, you have chips, but that's not filling. You don't feel spiritual, you feel hungry. And that's just what it is sometimes. And obviously there are beautiful parts of Judaism and beautiful parts of Orthodoxy. But sometimes you're hungry. And honestly, I never was hungry during this trip. I had so much food with me. It was just weird that like, I couldn't really eat out in the restaurant with, with my cousins. And you know, I just sat there and whatever, it is my choice. Um, but if you feel that way, that's okay. That's normal. I think food is such a big part of anyone's culture um, or just, just socialization in general. And also as someone who didn't grow up keeping kosher, so I'd gone out to, to eat. I know tons of not kosher places, gone out to eat with my cousins tons of times. And then having this experience of, oh, I actually can't eat here anymore. I can't eat in your house anymore. It's hard, but, oh, that's my dog. Hi, Heidi. It is what it is. And I'm, I'm happy I keep kosher. I know it's important. So I just keep powering on. Thank you for watching this video. And we especially have a special guest appearance. And I'll see you in the next one.